Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your lunch. I did. Um, also, a big welcome to the people watching from home. Uh, here at the main stage, we are continuing with a great talk by Nick Vainoff. And uh, Nick has a beautiful title. I heard quite some titles, but Nick is Director of Contributor Success. He's going to explain us all about what that uh, means and um, also how it is to be uh, working now um, at, uh, at GitLab instead of working for, uh, for a Drupal agency. So um, I would like to uh, invite you to the stage, uh, Nick. Please give him a big hand of applause. <laughs> Thank you very Hi. much. So, so my, my first question to you, Nick, is uh, you moved from a Drupal agency and now uh, you moved into the uh, big open source vendor world. Um, do you miss Drupal? Miss Drupal? Well, I'm, I'm still somewhat connected to Drupal, um, but it's a little weird after 15 years, uh, because I think I've been doing Drupal for 15 years, uh -huh. um, to see it from like an outsider perspective, um, which also is like a bit uh, strange and I feel like a little like Ah, I'm not belonging here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but we'll talk about it in, in the, the session as well, like what that means. But it, it also gives me like a good perspective or, or like insights into like how to view the, the, the proudness that the Drupal community should have uh, on, on like how it's doing. Yeah. Um, but as I said, we'll, we'll talk a bit about that. Okay. Well, very curious to hear more about it. Thank you very much. One more a big applause. Hi. So, uh, indeed, we're going to talk about um, GitLab. Uh, I hope, or I, um, maybe that's a question uh, to you, uh, that you know GitLab or heard about that. Who, who hasn't? Oh, so, everybody. Okay, I don't need to explain that. That's good. Drupal, I kind of like assume that you know. Uh, otherwise, you might be in the wrong conference. There's another one next door. <laughs> so, and um, uh, about, as well, your business or the business that you work for, or you as an individual. Uh, so there's like a lot of connections to make. Um, I think if you, you ask yourself, why am I here? Uh, which is like the, 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 the big question, like um, well, why? Um, probably for everybody, that's a little different. Um, some of you are freelancers, I would assume. Uh, who's a freelancer? Or I think in ZZP in, in Dutch. <laughs> yes, so um, other people are maybe employed for a Drupal or a company that does Drupal, I suppose the majority. Yeah. Uh, and then who didn't fall in one of those groups? So that's one, one person, yeah, Preston. <laughs> yes, so, so there's lots of different kinds of, of, of people. Um, let's talk a little bit about myself uh, as well. So uh, 15 years ago, indeed, I started uh, in the Drupal world. Um, and maybe you've heard of this company called Crimson, for those that have been <laughs> yes, in, in the Drupal world for a, a quite a while. Um, I, I graduated um, as, uh, back then it was electronics and an option ICT, uh, because just doing software development, that's not what you study, you study electronics. Um, and then I was looking for a job and uh, I saw many jobs and then uh, most of them required you to have a suit. And then one company said, ah, T-shirts are fine. And next week, we'll travel to Seged. Um, so I said, OK, perfect. I can wear a T-shirt, and we travel. And I can do uh, some web development. That it was Drupal, sure, fine. I, wasn't, I didn't know about that. Um, fast forward, I traveled to many places. I did Drupal meetups in um, Barcelona. I lived in Barcelona. I did Drupal meetups in Portugal. I moved to the States, to Boston, and worked for Acquia as well, uh, both as um, like an open source contributor, but also as a product developer and like a, a lot more. Um, and then moved, and this is like five years ago, moved back to Belgium. Um, I liked what Acquia was doing, uh, but I wanted to have an impact on the European world. Uh, I thought I could still change the world. Uh, maybe I still can, I don't know, but it's a long, uh, a long journey in your life. Eh? Um, and I joined Drop Solid. Um, who has heard of Drop Solid? Uh, I see two former employees uh, <laughs> or colleagues in, in the back. Um, so Drop Solid is also like a, a big Drupal company, um, and they focus on products and services. Now, one month and a half ago, um, I changed everything again, um, and I joined GitLab, um, which is not a Drupal company at all. They don't do any Drupal. 
their website is built uh, on static pages uh, in GitLab itself. I still have to get used to some of that. Um, but they did a lot of, or they do everything open source, and it was just very interesting to understand that they had a challenge on how to grow the open source ecosystem. Um, and then after lots of conversations, this is something that I'm interested in, eh, to grow open source ecosystems. Also because um, a half a year ago, I was asked by the board of directors of the Drupal Association to join the table next to Dries and, and a couple of other people. Now also Imre, I think Imre either is in the room, yes, um, will be joining us uh, at that table to talk about how to grow, sustain uh, the open source community, basically how to make you happy. I would assume all of you, or I hope all of you have a Drupal.org account. Um, who, who doesn't? So please leave the room and create one. Eh? <laughs> yes, so, um, so that all makes you part of the open source ecosystem. It all makes you a contributor. What you then do as a contribution, that could differ like, wildly. Eh? Some of you maybe do core contributions. Some of you create or, or organize events. Others, just watch. In, uh, in geek speak, we call that lurking. Uh, I would assume many of you would identify yourself as a lurker. <laughs> so I see people nodding. So um, obviously, me, myself, uh, most of the time you're lurking, and sometimes you interact. Uh, but that still makes you a contributor. So that's a little bit about me. Um, and uh, maybe like one, one thing to know about this, well, I wouldn't call it a title, but the challenge is that they made me responsible, or not me, but like the, the, the team, uh, from growing from 150 contributors a month to 1,000. Uh, I don't know how we're going to solve that yet. Eh? Um, but this is pretty ambitious. So and you ask the question, how does that work? How do you all work together? How do we work together? Um, and uh, I was thinking about this, and I wanted to compare this to a concept that Hopefully, at least in, in Belgium, this is quite normal, that most of you know. Um, have you ever been, as a, as a child, in a youth work organization, like the Scouts or, or any of those uh, organizations? Who, who has? So that, that's quite some of you. So you don't do this for profit, right? Eh? You, you do this because there's really cool people. You do activities together. And at certain points, you become, um, I think when you're 16 or, or 17, you become the leader of a group of kids, um, and you still do this without profit, eh, there, the money doesn't matter at that point. You do this because you like to do that. You do this because uh, it's good for those kids, it's good for you, and um, at least for me, I learned a bleep ton, eh, I cannot uh, swear on stage, um, of skills on how to work with people, how to work with parents, eh, because they are different than the kids themselves. Um, and then as a challenge that, and that was more specific to the youth work that I did, um, I was working with kids um, with and without autism and uh, hyperactivity. Um, and also, quote unquote, regular kids, so it was like a mix of all kinds of kids. Um, so this was super interesting to me, and I didn't reflect on that until I think um, 20 years later, that an open source community is not that different from a bunch of kids and some leaders. Um, that maybe are happy and maybe are not, and maybe they come back and maybe they don't. Um, but ultimately, they will come back if it's fun. Um, and then the parents, the companies, will pay. Uh, because you, as a kid, you're happy. Um, this is an analogy that I make. It doesn't mean that it's true. Um, but for me, this is very much similar to, to how we all collaborate together. We are not tied to each other on a family basis or a company basis, um, but we're here because we all like the same thing. So um, this is a little bit similar to the youth work or open source ecosystem. Um, how does this work as an individual? Huh? Uh, I think the only thing that we know in a technology world is that everything changes all the time and it's frustrating. Uh, I see some people nodding and other people that are not nodding. Uh, it's true, like, everything is always changing, uh, and it's annoying. Uh, <laughs> you cannot keep up. It's impossible to keep up, and it's also totally okay to put that aside, but it's constant. And maybe one other constant thing that, and this is more re like relevant to companies, that is constant is time. 
If you are more efficient than the other person, <laughs> the only thing that is equal to you is time, because you did something faster than the other person. Um, but for you as an individual, it doesn't matter. In the work as well, time is irrelevant in a way. Huh? Um, but change, you need to play different kind of games, otherwise people get bored. Um, so this is a quote from um, a research paper from the Linux Foundation that also makes it very interesting to understand why people want to go to open source projects. Um, and it says, I won't read it like all of them, um, but what makes it so attractive is uh, rapid iteration, change, uh, collaborative innovation, um, but that sometimes, and that's for companies the case, is the opposite of legal and processes and um, making sure nothing goes wrong. Uh, what, what makes it so attractive to be an open source world is a little bit anarchy-ish, uh, because you can do whatever you want to do. Um, also, uh, if we go forward, the incentive and rewards. If I ask you why are you part of this open source community, um, can someone answer that? Is someone willing to take a stab at like, just one sentence or one word? Or is that too hard? Passion. What? Passion. Passion. Uh, passion is a very intangible word, eh? passion. I do this because I love this. And there is no other choice. <laughs> so what? Um, that, that's what it's called passion. Sure. So that's a great incentive. Um, it's because you, you love this. Another incentive could be uh, because you get recognized. Uh, because it's bigger than uh, the company that you work for. Uh, your company could be 20 or 1,000 people. Uh, but somehow you have this username and some random person from saying a random country, uh, Portugal, says, oh wow, this was exactly, exactly the thing I was looking for. Thank you so much. It gives you a warm and fuzzy feeling. Yeah. Similar to the youth work. If the parent says, oh, thank you for taking care. Yeah, it's a warm and fuzzy feeling. Um, you can also go a bit more tangible in terms of rewards. Now, I suppose you know the credit system in Drupal.org. Uh, the credit system is a very tangible way of saying this person um, yeah, he or, or she did all these kind of things and was rewarded for it based on what people think that he or she should be rewarded for. Not that different from this, um, and I think you know this in France, in some restaurants you have this collection of like 20 of these little plaques uh, of saying this restaurant was the best in 2000, 2001, 2, 3, 4, etc., etc. So this must be a great restaurant. Um, the restaurants like this, the people that go to the restaurant they know, well, this is probably a good restaurant. So you benefit both sides. Both the company benefits from, because uh, the, you as an individual have recognition and it's visible. Uh, if it's LinkedIn or Drupal.org, it's not that different. Eh? Both of them work similar. So um, it's like a good combination of incentives and rewards. And then as an individual, and I don't probably need to talk too much about this, um, is the people. Uh, why do you come to the, the Drupal Jam? is because you like to see faces again that you saw maybe last year. Why do you go to DrupalCon? You want to see faces you haven't seen in three years. Um, and this is a picture from DrupalCon Portland. Um, and almost every event I go to, I also see Gabor. So he's also somewhere in there. Uh, I saw him a couple of weeks ago in Dev Days, and now I see him here. So we, we kind of like see each other quite often, <laughs> but always at Drupal events. So it's a people thing. Um, I don't really know what he does as a day job, but I, I know him and I like to have a beer with him, so that's yeah, great. So people are very important. Now, this is a bit different for people than for companies. Why is it important for a company to go into open source? Um, have you ever thought about that? Or any of you, like a, a founder or like a person that started a company and made the explicit choice, I want to do open source? Just a hand is, is fine if, or if not. Um, I think also as a freelancer, you make that same choice. Eh? If you're a ZZP or like in a company on your own, you make that explicit choice. For many companies, and I don't want to generalize, um, it's a way to plug into a talent pool. Uh, uh, to give you an example, um, I organized together with a team Drupal Developer Days a couple weeks ago, um, and 350-ish uh, people that love Drupal, and most of them identify as developer or at least contributor, go there 
um, and they identify them to the sponsors somehow. So it's like a great talent pool to hope and try to attract that one person that maybe wants to work for you. And sure, remote is fine, anything. I just want to find someone that can help me. Huh? Um, so it, it helps to retain and attract top talent. That, that's the attraction part. The retention. Would you leave your current company if they forbid you to work on GitHub, GitLab, or Drupal.org? Uh, maybe you don't have to raise your hand, otherwise your employer like, kind of knows. Yeah, but um, you can say it in yourself. So at least for me, that's the case. If I would work for a company that doesn't like, understand or believes in this concept, I might not stay. Um, luckily, I think in the 15 years of all the companies I worked for, the only constant uh, was both innovation and change uh, and open source. And then the other example is from an, a book called The Innovator's Dilemma. Have you ever heard of that book? I see a couple of people nodding. Um, the Innovator's Dilemma talks about uh, this constant change. And the picture you see, uh, it, it's not by, by coincidence. It's a pneumatic, uh, the, the word pneumatic is important here, digging machine. Now, why is that important? Because I think, I don't know the year, you can look in the, in the book um, 50 years ago or something. The world was dominated, uh, uh, dominated by cable digging machines. And um, all of these companies said, these pneumatic machines, they're too expensive, they will never uh, work. Uh, no, we're staying with the cable. Um, think of Nokia, it's the same example. Somehow, suddenly, at one instance, Nokia was superseded by a bunch of other companies and they became irrelevant. This is the same thing that happened with the digging machines. Um, the, the cable digging machines became irrelevant because if the cable snapped, and that happened sometimes, the, the danger and the risk associated with it was too costly that a more expensive machine was actually worded to not have that risk. And suddenly all of these companies went bankrupt, or at least like they failed, and a bunch of new companies popped up, and they all made pneumatic digging machines. This book is full of these kind of examples. Um, but I think what you see happening right now in the, in the web space is a similar thing with JavaScript. Yeah, like suddenly, JavaScript is a certain renaissance. I don't know if it actually will have that same effect, um, but a lot of things are happening in that space, and maybe it will supersede something else, maybe it will coexist. But in this case, there is no longer a cable digging machine. It doesn't make any sense anymore. So it's a risk. Yeah? Um, but if you are in the open source world, Maybe you can see these things a bit earlier than if you're in a closed box uh, doing your own innovation. Um, so it's a competitive, competitive advantage as a company to be in open source. Uh, but I don't have to convince you. Eh? I just wanted to tell that story of the, the cable thing. Uh, and then more for, for companies, it's a lower total cost of ownership. And I think this is where Drupal can learn a little bit more, or at least I hope. Because at least in my experience, we are all building Websites with a bunch of custom code. Uh, and some of that goes back to Drupal, to contributed modules, to maybe private modules on your own GitLab or GitHub or whatever. Uh, and a fraction of that goes back into Drupal core. I understand. It's really hard uh, to, to get something in. Um, but if you get it in, you no longer carry the burden of maintaining it by yourself. Uh, if I ask you how big your maintenance budget is for all these custom code websites that you have, it's probably quite high. Um, so it's a hypothetical thing. Eh? I'm not sure if it's really feasible in the Drupal world. Um, but imagine if you don't have to do the maintenance budget for all this custom code, or at least like a fraction less, the total cost of ownership, which is the concept of what's the cost of a website or, or a project over the course of the time that it lives, um, it's going to be lower than your competitor. And then maybe you win, maybe. And there's always like a lot of other stuff. Um, so these are reasons to participate into open source, um, but that's probably not why, why you're here. Maybe you have a bunch of questions about GitLab and frustrations, I, I don't know. Um, but let's talk a bit about the two. I jumped ship like a month and a half ago, um, and I wanted to explain you a bit of what I saw so far between the, the two ecosystems. Um, have you ever seen or, or participated as a contributor to the GitLab open source 
codes, it's a very different world, right? Because you don't get exposed to, to that uh, code. Um, it's also a different language. Uh, so for me, um, when I was doing the interview with, uh, with GitLab, I told them very explicitly, I don't know Ruby. It's, I hope it's not an issue. <laughs> so um, it's fully made in, in Ruby and, and Go. Um, Drupal is a PHP world, obviously. Yeah. Um, but one thing that they do have in common is that they both want to yeah, succeed as an open source project. Um, they are, although a little different, uh, Drupal is more autonomous, where there's a bunch of companies around it. Um, GitLab as a project has GitLab the company um, that decides on what goes in, um, or at least there's a, a lot more ownership in that sense to the company. So let's take a look at some numbers. Um, the company is quite young. I don't know if you, you noticed, but it's only, what is it, eight years, eight years old? Um, and uh, it has, these are official numbers that I was allowed to, to say. Uh, so from the first of, uh, uh, end of January, 1,600 uh, employees or team members. Um, I started a month and a half ago by myself, alone in a co-working space, because they don't have an office anywhere in the world. Uh, so this is like a different kind of uh, way of working. We'll talk a bit about that as well. Um, and an estimation of 30 million users, both paid and free, uh, um, use GitLab. All of you qualify as a user if you have an account on Drupal.org, because Drupal.org has GitLab. Right? So that's, that's some of the, the things. Um, and then it's an open source core, which is also a little different than Drupal. Most of it is open source in the license, as in you can distribute and, and change it. Um, and some part of it is licensed, uh, which is the paid version um, that obviously is not free or is not um, allowed to change or redistribute. So that's a little different. And as a community of 3,450 contributors with merged MRs, as they uh, call it, or as, as we call it, I have to get adjusted to saying we. Uh, it's only been a month, I apologize, uh, um, as of uh, 30 of May. Now, if you compare that with uh, Drupal, it's not that different, but still different. Uh, so the funding of, of Drupal comes from multiple companies or a lot more healthy ecosystem in that sense um, that Dries also uh, posts about. If you have not seen the blog post about Dries and saying like who funds Drupal development uh, and then the yearly edition, you should really take a look. It's full of data. Uh, if you're a data nerd, quote unquote, you will love that blog post. It's full of stuff. Um, and that's only possible because there's that credit system at Drupal.org. Now, over a million websites run on Drupal. Again, this is not a pitch for Drupal nor for GitLab, so I'm going to skip that. Um, but the interesting part there on the right, there are more than 7,400 contributors and 1,100 organizations that identify themselves with, with Drupal. That's a lot. Uh, also, most of you uh, do. And then another difference, more than 50,000 modules, or more or less 50,000 modules, exist to extend the functionalities. This is quite unique to Drupal. Um, from, I, I thought this is like the most normal thing in open source that you can extend this. Um, that there's always like an ecosystem of extensions and contributed space and, and whatnot. Um, but in, in GitLab, that doesn't really exist in that sense. So if you want to contribute to GitLab, it's not really possible to say, I make a plugin or a bot, and now I'm part of the GitLab ecosystem. Um, so the, the barrier to, to get something in is a little higher, because instantly you're a core developer. Either it's everything or nothing. Uh, there's Runner, which made us in Go, so that's a little separate. So there's still a project you can choose from. You cannot create your own project and say, I'm not part of that community, even though nobody is using your contributed module. Uh, so in, in theory, you could game the credit system on Drupal.org by creating a module, creating 20 issues, crediting yourself for 20 issues. And you, it will have it on your profile. Huh? Uh, so that's a pro and con. Um, and uh, I also mentioned it in the beginning. You should really be proud on, on what the, the Drupal community has become uh, up until this point. Uh, so I, I've been with the Drupal community for 15 years. Suddenly, like I'm stepping out. Uh, imagine it, physically stepping out and looking at it from above. 
um, the, the healthiness of the, the ecosystem is, is unseen. Uh, so the fact that you all come together, or we all come together, uh, talk about that same thing that you're, and, and we and call United, uh, it's also at the Drupal Jam uh, label, I think, reunited. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, that's unseen. So also GitLab um, was looking at, like, how can we make this, um, I wouldn't say equal, um, but how can we take inspiration from that ecosystem to also become, in a similar way, healthy? Um, what the Drupal community did in recognition of non-code contributions is also unseen in uh, open source projects. Uh, I don't know if you've, you know that, but uh, in Drupal.org you can say I'm an event organizer and you can still get a credit for it um, right now. And I cannot say what, what the future will look like, uh, but in GitLab, and I, I said it earlier, they count merge requests. Uh, so everything that's a change counts as a credit, if you will. Um, but the people that organize Drupal Jam, for example, they don't make a change. So in that world today, they're not recognized. That doesn't mean it's not recognized in, in the philosophy, but in the metrics, today that doesn't count, which, yeah, is a challenge, obviously. So be very proud, and um, I'm, I'm somewhat like sentimental of suddenly not belonging to the Drupal community anymore, and so I hope I'm still welcome. Uh, but remember, we talked about change, and um, Dries also blogged about this picture. Um, I had to blur the copyright uh, images from the legal department um, because they have copyrights. <laughs> so, um, and I wasn't sure about some logos, but uh, at, at least like two of them I found licenses for, which was Drupal and HTML5. Uh, so I was allowed to, to keep those. Now, if you see the 20 years, and it's actually 22 years that Drupal has gone through, um, I think it, it adds to the testament that change is a constant. Uh, Drupal somehow, as one of the few open source projects, survived all these changes, including uh, the first iPhone, which suddenly makes mobile uh, web uh, a, a normal thing. It wasn't responsive eh, in, in the first Drupal versions. Um, you can see also uh, GitHub started in, in 2008. Um, th this whole concept of belonging to an open source project that didn't exist. Eh? Um, so uh, Drupal was in, in many, many ways the forefront or in the forefront of these ecosystems. So that's also why it's very much respected. So and, and you should be proud. If you suddenly step out of it, and maybe I, I suggest that you do just in a GitHub project or, or a GitLab project or whatever, you, you'll see that there's like very different kind of challenges to suddenly yeah, be, belong somewhere. Um, so yeah, this uh, shows that really well. Why would you contribute? Um, and I asked you before the question, why? Uh, what's the answer to life, the universe, and everything? And then you say, yes, at least some people, yes. <laughs> yes, so, but that's not an actual answer. Eh? So I mean, that's, it's good to have that question out of the way. Uh, <laughs> yes, so, and this big computer maybe will compute. If you haven't seen that movie, uh, the, I think the, the Galaxy, what is it called? The, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and it's also a book. Uh, I, I really recommend uh, either the movie or the book. Um, but who and, and what we're talking about is very different. And there's a paper, I, and I added it to my slides. If you uh, download the slides later on, you can look at the paper itself. They analyzed how can you measure non-code contributions. Um, it was a little weird because they only talked about um, yeah, basically issues and merge requests or, or pull requests from on GitHub. But it was very interesting for me to get an insight on, OK, this stuff on the left is what you can measure. So other people are adding code. Other people are reviewing. Uh, maybe people are merging, releasing, reporting, commenting, reacting. And then the one that is not there is lurking because you cannot measure lurkers. <laughs> um, maybe you should have a button, I'm a lurker. I don't know. Uh, but then you're reacting. Um, and then on the right, those are the hats that people wear. Um, hopefully, you can identify yourself with one of those hats. If you cannot, please let me know, uh, because then I have a, a gap in, in my list, and maybe I should have it added. But there's always something else that you identify as, uh, as a contributor. 
Um, this is exactly the same in the youth work example I talked about. Uh, like, who do I identify with? Uh, I'm the crazy guy making crazy uh, forest games, uh, or I'm the cook. Uh, this is the same, eh? your, your incentive or the why, why are you in the youth work? Because you belong, and I belong here, and my passion, and it's fine, um, but your role could be very different. In a company, this is not that different. Eh? In a company, you're also probably trying to find your role, your, your, your why, and what am I doing here? But ultimately, you're doing a bunch of basic actions. Now, if you could measure these bunch of basic actions, then you already know, okay, how healthy is my ecosystem? Um, so I think uh, this is a really great paper to understand the who and what we are talking about. At Drupal.org, it's not look, really looking at all of these, um, but there is some parts, and maybe you've seen it in the issue. At the end of the issue, it shows you all the people that interacted with that issue. Have you seen that before? Um, if you haven't, just take a look at an open issue, and it will show you oh, four people coming from uh, either the individual and then maybe working also for a company, working then for a client um, that have four reactions and uh, one commit, and then oh, this person also has one reaction, and it shows you that list. That's more or less the same, although Drupal implemented this. They didn't do the research. They somehow found out by uh, doing this in practice. Uh, so that's also interesting. And then um, ultimately, um, what we also have, and we'll talk a bit about the credit system in a bit uh, more on like, what that actually means and, and how that can change, is this. Uh, so there's uh, people that get paid to be on Drupal.org. I think I asked you before, uh, but I assume most of you are being paid to do Drupal. Who, who is the, the, the single volunteer in the room? Is there a volunteer? in the room that does Drupal, not by the employer? See, Preston. <laughs> yeah. Just the event, but that's still a contribution. Eh? So you spoke or are speaking, see, as well. So and if we think about it, there's, there's indeed a couple of volunteers. Flashback, in the beginning of Drupal, most of it, or at least like a big part, was volunteer driven. Uh, similar to, to youth work, it's volunteer driven and suddenly becomes maybe also paid positions and et cetera. Um, this is a great, great blog post if you're interested in that topic about volunteer and paid positions and the fact that uh, you have free time is a privilege. The fact that you can go into your sofa in the end of the evening and watch um, uh, what, what's the recent thing uh, today on Netflix? I don't, <laughs> I don't know, watch any Netflix thing or, or Disney. Uh, um, in my house, it's frozen all the time. Uh, so uh, not my choice. But the fact that you have that privilege to have free time is, uh, is quite crazy. Uh, um, imagine in, um, yeah, to, to, to name, a, I wouldn't name a country or any place, but sometimes there is no free time because you have the burden of just surviving. Um, and maybe you're working, and then the rest is maybe survival. Um, so this is also very interesting in the open source world and the privilege of actually contributing back on an unpaid position. Yeah, that's, that's quite unique. Uh, so this is a bit more about GitLab itself. Um, and just want to explain how, how that's a little different. I told you that Drupal is like a community backed by a couple companies, and GitLab is also a community, but mainly like from the GitLab company itself, kind of obvious because the name is the same. Um, and they have a, a bunch of similar things. Uh, so they have manuals. Uh, there is a reason on how to contribute. And then there's a community at Gitter, which is similar to Slack or Discord, but not quite. Um, and then there's also an unofficial Discord. Um, so that's things you recognize. And things are a little different. Um, they, they have quarterly hackathons. Um, and then and the hackathons uh, these days are focused on a specific topic. You can compare it to the initiatives in Drupal, although Drupal doesn't impose. These are three months that we're going to work on something like this. Uh, so if it's good or bad, I'm not going to make any judgment there, but just a difference that I noticed. And then um, another difference is that they have meetups, like smaller scale meetups, but events like this, I haven't seen that in, in the GitLab world uh, yet. Uh, maybe uh, you want to organize that, I don't know. Um, but this is also quite unique that you have a Drupal jar, not organized by a single company. 
in the open source world, say, you have uh, Kubernetes and a bunch of other things, but you know mostly which kind of companies that are behind that. Um, Drupal Jam and Drupal Developer Days is really, really community-led. Eh? Um, so yeah, that's the difference. And then some office hours, I think, that also exists in, in Drupal. Uh, and then a little bit about me. Uh, um, I'm the middle here. Uh, this is also new to me, and I'm responsible for that handbook page, uh, which is called the Contributor Success Team. Uh, you can compare that a bit to the work that the Drupal Association uh, does, or um, like to work on the tooling. You don't see them very often, uh, but if it's broken, then it's frustrating, and maybe you have a bad experience. Um, so that's more or less, uh, in summary, uh, what, that, what that is. And then also, similar to Drupal, there's a core team. The core team people are not necessarily people from GitLab or not Git GitLab employees. They're people that contribute a lot, and they have access to a lot more than um, yeah, people that are not part of this team. So for example, they can access a couple of the Slack channels uh, or Slack spaces of GitLab itself. Um, and there's some other privileges that they get because they contribute a lot back. Um, if you compare that to, to Drupal, uh, there's also kind of a core team. Um, but maybe it's a good question. What kind of privileges do they get? Uh, or is that even healthy to have that? Uh, and then another thing that I noticed in, in that month and a half is that they have this concept of merge request coaches. Um, I think also Drupal has something called like coaches or, or mentors. Um, but this is a formal job. Uh, so there's. Uh, I yeah, quite a lot of merge request coaches in GitLab itself. That main job is to help you get something in. Um, so I found that interesting. Now in rewards, I will go a little quick here um, because also Drupal has certain rewards. Uh, there's like prizes and heroes program, and then there's like every month there's a, a release, and they say like, oh, this most valuable contributor um, contributed uh, a lot, and we're gonna put them in the picture um, because yeah, it's important. As far as I know, but maybe I'm wrong, Drupal Org doesn't have a newsletter that says these people were like put in the picture. Um, but maybe it is. if you look at Drupal, um, what you do have, um, and this is also for most people, if you go to DrupalCon, like a moment to look forward to is the, the keynote of, uh, of Dries Buitaert, uh, where he shows this is the progress that Drupal made, and I want to especially thank, and then there's a bunch of people that he thanks because they contributed back to Drupal. That's a reward. Eh? That's, that's certainly um, something to strive for, why maybe you would contribute as that's the reward. If you contribute back a lot and you don't get somewhat of rewards, it might lead into what is called a burnout. Eh? Also in companies, that's the same. If you work a lot and nobody gives you the credit to do so or that gives you the acknowledgement that this was really tough, and thank you for, for going the extra mile or whatever. Um, yeah, that's a dangerous area. Another thing on Drupal.org, I don't know if you know that, but if you have a lot of credits as a company or associ associated with the company, you do get a bit higher in the organization ranking and potentially customers looking at the organization or at least the organizations from Drupal.org might get to you faster than the ones that don't. Um, if you don't know where your company is located at in that list, uh, I suggest that you take a look. Drupal.org is still a va very valuable lead channel in, in a way. Um, and then we talked about the, the, the credit system. And then this is assumptions. I don't know. Um, who has worked in more than one Drupal company or open source company? Um, so that's, that's quite some. So you could say that the reward of working on open source is to jump the career ladder more quickly. Because, and then that's the second one, eh, the, the little dog, you learn skills otherwise difficult in your daily routine. Um, these are my assumptions. You should not take them as truth. Eh? Um, at least th those are true for me. I worked in many different kind of companies, and the constant was, yeah, as I said, change, open source, and for the last 15 years, uh, Drupal. Um, and then a, a, a quite a special one on, on the right. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, so I made it a bit bigger. Um, this is me in Malaysia uh, during my holiday, uh, my personal holiday um, in, I think, 2014 um, with my now wife. Um, and I couldn't leave Drupal 
aside. So during my two weeks in Malaysia, I wanted to go to a Drupal meetup. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and I actually wanted to speak as well, um, because somehow I get very much a fulfilling um, energy from talking about these things. Um, again, this is, this is my life, not necessarily uh, reflecting on, on your life. Um, but I um, was also happy that my wife understood and she went along with me to this Drupal meetup where we talked about Search API and Solar and, and whatnot. Um, so these are also the, the people that joined that meetup. And basically, I, I wrote a message to the Facebook group of the Malaysia Drupal, like, I'm here. Can we do something? Uh, and they organized something. And they had pizza and, and their regular yeah, meetup thing. Um, but this is also a reward, right? If you can travel, or if, if you like that, and you go to events like this, Drupal Jam. Uh, I recently went to Portland uh, to DrupalCon. Um, you have the people effect. Uh, you have the reward effect. You're part of something bigger. Um, yeah, this, this is something precious that you should hold on to. Um, careful here. This, if you don't, if this is not in your nature, or if you cannot put this aside like purposely, it also could lead to a burnout. Eh? Uh, so it's like a double thing. Um, so we talked a bit about the, the business as well. But I don't know if you, talk, if you know the, the flywheel strategy. This is like very much up in the air business talk. Um, have you ever heard of the flywheel effect? One person who has been spinning as the athletic thing or like in, in, a, in a gym. Uh, only one person. Yeah, that's hard to compare it with. But if you spin, it's like it's a bike and your, your feet are stuck on the, the paddles. Um, the pedals will go faster than the own energy that you put in at some point. Right? They will keep going. That's the flywheel effect. So uh, you put in a little bit of energy, and sure, it will go a little bit. But the next time you put in a little bit of energy, it will go like double because it still has energy from the previous time. Right? So uh, the more small pieces of energy you put in, the, the faster it will go. Yeah, believe it or not, they make from every kind of word like this also a business strategy. Um, and it's, it's actually come from a book called Good to Great. So if you're interested in these kind of concepts, um, it, it's a really good or, or interesting book to, to read. And what they say is that in the beginning of a company, you, have, you need the good people, you need good energy and a good direction. And they also call it the big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, this is from the book, eh? again. Uh, these are not necessarily my opinions. This is from the book. Uh, and also a thing called uh, the hedgehog concept, something that's quite unique and can protect itself uh, really well. Uh, so if you have a crazy goal and you have a hedgehog, as in like you have spikes and you can protect yourself in, in a way, um, and you keep pouring in energy on it, ultimately it will lead to a flywheel effect um, because more people will want what you have. They will yeah, not give you money. Eh? It's an exchange eh? in, in a way for services or products. Um, and you can keep investing that back into your big hairy dashes goal um, and go into a flywheel effect. Now, why is this a dual flywheel? Um, is if you do this, and you, you kind of mastered this hedgehog and big hairy dashes goal and your open source, you not only have your business flywheel, you also allow other people to add an energy to that same flywheel and go faster. That's the, the concept of many open source companies or, or why they believe that this is like a faster way to innovation um, than going proprietary. So this is why it's called a dual flywheel. Um, this is what it's called. You can read about it on, on GitLab. It's not that complicated, right? Uh, more features, more users, more revenue. That's the traditional flywheel. You add in more users, more contributions, more features, more revenue, et cetera, et cetera. And in a perfect world, you have a dual flywheel. Um, you could take this home if you have a business or someone that you can talk about in your business on how to get that effect. Um, it's not easy. Uh, but ideally, you work on something that's bigger than yourself in the same way that you're in this community because it's bigger than yourself. Uh, so uh, hopefully that uh, was helpful. Now, I think we're almost out of time, right? So uh, let me go a little bit quicker. Um, this is the roadmap, it's public, so that I cannot really show you much because you basically build it with other people. Um, so there's no secret thing. I think this one is also 
very quickly, interesting, and I mentioned it there, remotes and, and everybody, but then um, I wanted to talk about this one. What I, for me was like the most crazy thing is that they don't use email in the business. You, people don't send other people email. Um, I'm happy to talk about that maybe in, in the Q&A, um, but it was very disruptive for me because I mastered a workflow with labels and stars and all these kind of things in Gmail and suddenly people don't send emails. So yeah, this was frustrating, uh, but interesting in, in the same way. Um, and then uh, you see here as well, and I think some of you use Slack, um, and some of you might also do private messages to each other. The, the, the rule that you can read it on the, in the handbook is say don't send each other's private messages. Uh, in the same way that don't send each other email, don't send each other private messages. Make sure that other people can read along. Uh, so this was interesting. And then there's a bunch of other things in the slide that we don't have time for here, but that you can like, review later. But there's some tips and tricks for Drupal.org, GitLab as well, uh, how to work a little bit quicker. Uh, so this is crazy. Like, it's a shortcut to make your rally markdown. Very, very useful. Uh, and rebasing. So I think with that, I'd like to thank you and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, I'm wondering if you go on holiday and you tell your wife, oh, I actually have a meeting for my company or my, um, well, your project, your open source project. It's, it's still your wife? She's still my wife, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, well. yeah, so we got married, I think, two years ago in, in the, the pandemic. Uh, okay, okay. Yes, yes. And she does understand um, that you, even on holiday, want to be uh, working, basically. I'm not sure if I gave her a lot of choice, though. Okay. <laughs> yes, okay. I'm not sure she understands. Yes. <laughs> Might be a warning. Yeah. Uh, yes. uh, in this case, um, I really want to thank you for traveling all the way to the Netherlands this yeah, time. Yeah. Um, thank thank you. you very much. Um, here is a small present uh, from us. Uh -huh. Thank um, you. There is time for one question from the audience. Is there a question for Nick? It must be. It meant so much. Well, I have a question for you. Um, you had uh, all your pictures, and there was uh, un, un slash, or what was the source of all your uh, the un, pictures? Unsplash. Unsplash, so Unsplash is a, a website that has uh, images that you can use for um, presentations with the correct copyright to do so, as long oh, as wow. you reference the, the picture. Excellent. Uh, wow. So if you make presentations, make sure uh, that it's in the same open source ethos. Credit the people that did the stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, one last big hand of applause for Nick. Thank you very much. Here at this stage, uh, we will uh, rebuild uh, the stage a little bit, and then again at the top of the hour, uh, we will start with a uh, talk show number two. And uh, our guest there um, is from uh, IO, and we're going to talk about Drupal Core. So um, you're all very welcome to uh, join at uh, sharp three o'clock and all other uh, sessions as mentioned above will start sharp at three o'clock as well. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a great day. Also people at home, thank you for tuning in. See you in 11 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>